Good day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading and today we're going to be reviewing the Europe Open trading strategy and just looking at the last week or so of just some basic support and resistance levels and uh, the market uh, opening up during the Europe London hours and the US hours and the significance of how that can also uh, just be by using some basic support and resistance levels how how that can benefit traders so just looking uh, last few days of the euro yen or sorry the pound and again just to uh, remind everybody that the purple pink is the Asian session high and low the yellow is the Europe uh, London high low and the green is the US session high and low I'm just going to leave those on there to make it simpler for people to see. But today we're just going to go over some basic support and resistance levels and also using the previous sessions, highs and lows, as potential areas of support and resistance and how to identify those. So we'll start off uh, just on the 26th of May. Actually, we'll go back to the 25th. So we got a market that's obviously broken out quite strongly the day before we're not going to look at other time frames we're just going to identify some areas that you can be using if you're trading Europe or trading the London breakout um, and what I would tend to do is look for the last candle going into um, as Asia's traded wherever the last candle that if you were to tr have traded it as a breakout either long or short would be valid and in this particular case in the US session the market was long and the last breakout trade that held for traders was this particular candle and the significance of that is that basically what what we're asking ourselves is that if this person was long these traders were long as the market came back have have they been stopped out where's their stop obviously probably underneath of that bar or one of these two bars and the market struggled to go back inside of that range and as London opened up we saw it exploded north retested on a pullback and then again began its uh, move strongly north now breakout traders on a daily chart would have been picked up here so we've got different time frame traders trading the market but there was obviously a lot of interest for other time frame traders to enter the market on a break of that during London the pullback was weak so even again if traders were trading that going into the US session uh, they had a lot of momentum coming up from the previous day but again just to reiterate going into the London open just erase that the main thing that I look for is where's the last um, institutional movement where that market is still being protected so again if we were to uh, see that traders obviously entered the market around that level the next day we go into the market now we see an example here of where the market um, going into London the Asian market held that support level but we also had a ceiling up there where the market had not penetrated and as London opened we saw a retest of that high and selling high occurred now breakout traders who may have entered in at the three o'clock candle the break of the low of the three o'clock candle would be short now this is where we if we were going into the US session we know that this particular candle now could also be a level to limit order short but also a retest of that low consolidation inside of that range but we know that we've got a one bar risk if we didn't if we didn't limit order that candle short and we were trading the US session we know that we've got an opportunity to possibly trade the break of the um, 16 o'clock candle into the US session so again support and resistance let's just go back and draw that this would be our last level of support and our other level of resistance uh, if people were going long in Asia we'd be looking at this candle maybe holding valid as a stop for buying low and if we were going short we'd want to see some evidence of, of sellers coming into the market which we got here 
So breakout traders trading low on the break of that candle, they knew that they might get a retest of the London open low, which we did. That candle strongly traded uh, south and, and short traders were able to hold on for a reasonable move into the U.S. session. So again, the next day, we would look for breakout traders where, where if they traded the breakout of the U.S. session, that may have even been up here, but I'm looking for a dominant candle, a dominant bear candle as the market traded down into the U.S. session. And then if they were to trade the break of that, and that still held valid, which obviously correlates with the Asia high. Now, London opened up inside of the Asian range. Bull, a bullish candle that pipped both ends, but then we get a return down towards the the selling side but it hasn't hit the stops now this is where um, again depending on how you're trading what time frame we could start to look at this as a as a market profile and we see that's in the center of the profile but again just looking at basic support and resistance we know that um, breakout traders are short here and we know that the previous session low is down here the low of the day so again we've got breakout traders from both time frames entering the market um, we've got a reasonable area of support and resistance but then breakout traders have entered in the market in here and then struggled down into new lows but they were able to have a low risk reward trade again the next day so what I would look for here is the last um, breakout before the market has closed that's held that's still valid so if you were short here you'd still be in the market over here it hasn't hit your stop the market has made new lows going into Asia okay so as we get into the London open the market auctions down we get a pin bar bullish traders enter the market if you were to enter on a break of that in going into the towards the US session that still would have been a valid trade or even broke traded the break of the pin bar down low uh, if you didn't enter the market, again, this is an example of buying low and you'd be looking to sell high. But again, just going back, basic support and resistance, breakout candle, previous day's low. We saw the market reject that level. Again, it's very small range, but just looking for areas of where we see evidence of an opportunity to buy or evidence of an area to sell where the market may protect an existing position. So again, going into the next day, where we want to see the market auctioned up late into the U.S. session. So I would look to see where the market potentially may layer, where, where bears now may flip to buyers, so the market auctioned above that. The first can't, first hour we saw the market retest the breakout, so there's an opportunity for buyers into Asia. And then again, London high, breakout candle, we, we want to see some evidence of selling, which we saw very strong evidence of that occur yesterday. Um, the market auctioned down heavily. Now, here's an example of where you might look for a 50% retracement of a strong move. Now, however you want to do it, here's an easier way. The first candle of London breaks out strongly. So if we know that's an institutional candle, institutions have shorted the market consecutively. The market's retested the, the high of the second hour. Sellers have come in, they're selling tail here, lower high, lower low, and then smash down through the U.S. session. Great opportunities yesterday for traders. Um, again, just looking at simple support and resistance. No indicators, know the time of day, start looking for these basic patterns. Um, you know, it's really not that complicated, traders. Price action can give you almost everything that you need to know about the market. But start drawing these levels of support and resistance. Look for the last area of a breakout. When you see um, a strong momentum occur in the first or second hour, uh, look for 50% levels. Know the time of day. Um, use the previous day's support and resistance levels, your breakouts, your uh, look for where those market, the market is going to protect certain positions uh, and trade with the trend traders. 
Keep your downside managed. Always manage the downside. The upside will take care of itself. So you can see in any of these trades, it's always a one bar risk. And you're looking at, you know, maybe two to one, one, one to one minimum, two, three, maybe four to one on strong trending days. So keep it simple, traders. Support and resistance. Hopefully this helps. Uh, you know, I appreciate comments and feedback. Just start drawing these lines on your charts. Look at the London, Europe Open, U.S. Open. Look for evidence of where the institutional candles that that if they're long or short, where those trade trade entries are still holding strong going into market opens. Thanks, traders, and have a great day. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.